Hey everyone, welcome to Making Sense. If you've been here before, I want to welcome you back. And if this is your first time checking out my channel, welcome aboard. If you could do me a huge favor though, click that subscribe button down below, like, comment, and or share my videos, that'd be greatly appreciated. Today's video is going to be my personal fragrance journey. From the first fragrance I can remember wearing a lot back in the day, up until the point where I truly became a member of FragCon. Stay tuned. So everyone's fragrance journey is a little bit different. In my case, I can remember the first fragrance I ever purchased, and I, I featured it the other day, it's this one here, Aspen by Cody. And the reason I purchased this fragrance, I have an older sister who used to have a bottle of this, and for some reason, somebody she knew wore it or something like that, and she really liked the smell. So one day, she left it on the counter, I walked over, sprayed it, and uh, the rest was history. When I smelled it, I, I don't remember if I actually took the bottle. I might have actually taken it. Kristen, if I did, I apologize. It, it might be a little bit too late now. But I'm pretty sure what we do is we end up going to like the local pharmacy, like Walgreens or one of those stores, and I end up picking up a bottle of this. Uh, this was like eight bucks. I just bought it. I talked about this recently. So uh, Aspen by Cody, my first introduction to fragrances. Now, my fragrance journey started when I was in either the seventh or eighth grade. My sister had brought home a bottle of cologne, and I had a chance to get my nose on it and it was probably love at first sniff. No joke, no lie, no pun intended. That fragrance was Aspen by Cody. Needless to say, if you have had your nose on this, if you've ever tried cool water, if you like green Irish tweed, any of those types of fragrances, it's one that you'll probably find really attractive and or appealing. Unless you do not like synthetics in any way, shape or form, then you would probably hate this if you were anti-synthetic. But otherwise, this is a really nice fragrance. Another fragrance that was very, very popular back then some of you might have this, some of you might have even worn it. This one here is Curve by Liz Claiborne. Very popular fragrance, another mass appealing, just a, a very easy to wear fragrance. Everybody wore this back in the day. Uh, the one I would have worn beside this one I do not have my collection would have been Hugo by Hugo Boss. Uh, it comes with like a gray or green cap, it pops off, hangs off to the side. That was a very popular fragrance I wore a lot back then too. Uh, the one after that would be this bad boy. Dracar Noir. Now, pretty much anyone back in the day wore this fragrance. Me personally, I wore this from probably right after senior year up until I was about 23 or so, 22, 23, with some other fragrances mixed into the uh, the entire pile. Uh, for me though, Dracar Noir is a consistent beast. If you wear it today, somebody remembers it because everyone in their world uh, pretty much wore this fragrance. We'll keep moving forward. The next one on the list would be this guy right here, which is kind of funny because I never put two and two together, but Cool Water by Davidoff. Now we're going to see some similarities here. I told you my first fragrance and I loved it was Aspen by Cody. And this one here is not far down the line. So I got to this one and I remember thinking this was just a really nice fragrance. It smelled great. I really enjoyed wearing this one and I never put two and two together that they smelled somewhat similar with Aspen by Cody. When I was younger, maybe 18 to 21, 22, something like that, I actually worked at this place. Abercrombie and Fitch. Yep, I was one of those guys. And I used to wear the original Abercrombie and Fitch. It was a really great fragrance. It was what the store smelled like. Everyone loved it, uh, or most people loved it. I can't find that anywhere. So if someone's got it out there and you want to send me some, send it my way. I'd love it. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, just post a comment below, tell me where to find it. That'd be great too. Uh, the other fragrance I wore a lot was Woods by Abercrombie. I personally loved this fragrance. Um, it was richer, it was, you know, not as not as teeny or, or young or whatever wording you want to use. And I still really like this one today. Um, if they were going to cancel this again, I would probably make sure I go pick up at least two or three more bottles just to keep in my collection. I don't wear it often. I have a ton of fragrances. But when I do, it brings me back and I really like the smell. And again, that's Abercrombie and Fitch Woods. Now, I got married when I was 25 going 24, 25, and my wife really liked this next fragrance. And honestly, when I look at most of my fragrances in my past, I realized that she had good taste. Maybe I didn't have so much, although those other fragrances I just mentioned were really nice. This is one that she had said just stuck out to her as a wow fragrance in a sense, and she really liked it. I couldn't stand the smell of it. I bought it because she liked it. 
and I wore it once in a while and I still try to put it on every year around our anniversary. And some of you might be jealous. Honestly, if you're a part of the FRAGCOM, you realize this is a gem. This is Dior Fahrenheit. Yes, the one with the petrol vibe. This one here uh, is from 2001 maybe. Maybe, maybe even right before that, right after. Now I appreciate the smell. Back then, this would have been horrible to me. And I remember smelling it and just thinking, what was she thinking? Why would she like the scent of this fragrance? Now, I get it. It's really rich and nice fragrance. It is absolutely probably one of the most potent fragrances that I own, other than something like this guy. Why not go there and just pop this guy up in the sky? If you ever put this to your nose, Steven Anderson, you know I'm talking to you. I don't know why you always get shout outs to my group, but you're a good dude. That guy right there uh, gives Dior Fahrenheit a run for its money uh, when it comes to potency and, and overall. Uh, you could say wow factor, but it all depends what kind of wow you want it to be. Uh, again, next stage, Dior Fahrenheit. Now after Dior Fahrenheit, um, again, when I got married, my wife liked that fragrance. So that was something that I added to my collection. You know, part of this fragrance journey is things you run into through life and, you know, different attributes that come into play are people around you and people that bring different fragrances into your life. In this case, Dior Fahrenheit for me. The next fragrance, which is kind of cool, um, I never knew it was as big of a fragrance or fragrance or as famous of a fragrance as it, as it ultimately is. And this is actually the original bottle. Creed Green Irish Tweed. This fragrance is what I truly consider to be the one that got me to the point where I really loved fragrances. When I got this bottle and the way it made me feel, um, the overall, like, the reaction I had and people had around me when they smelled this on me made me just start going to buy every fragrance I could find. I literally would just go to a Marshalls or TJ Maxx, and if they had a fragrance on the shelf that I didn't own, I just bought it. To the point that I had a hundred and something fragrances, Honestly, most of them I would never wear. I've never worn or I sold off back in the day. Um, and that all started with this guy right here, Creed Green Irish Tweed. Now, you can see I have a bottle here. I wanna say I have two more behind there because that is, if I had one fragrance for life, it's probably Creed Green Irish Tweed because whenever I smell it, I really feel that it's just, it's a masterpiece in my mind. Uh, you might agree, you might not, but to me, uh, this one right here, Fragrance for life. Love this one right here. That's Creed Green Irish Creed. A couple years ago, or whenever it came out, I was walking through a Macy's. Now, one of my biggest things or the hardest thing for me to, to bite the bullet with originally was to pay 50, 60, 70, 80 or more dollars for a single bottle of cologne, which looking back probably was smart. Uh, today's day and age, and all of you watching this channel and looking behind me here, can see that that's not the highest ticket uh, or, or that high of a ticket number anymore. Uh, the fragrance that got me to pull the trigger on that and really open the door to make me feel a little bit more comfortable with spending money on something that I loved for myself and the sense of fragrances was this one right here. Azara Wanted by Night. So when I was walking through Macy's, it was kind of cool. The guy at the counter, uh, I don't remember his name, really tall gentleman, really friendly, really nice. It was in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, he had said to me, hey, I have a fragrance for you. You should try this one out. And I said, oh, it's okay. Um, I don't really go for the salesman thing too often, uh, the barker at the carnival, things like that. But he was really nice. So I said, you know what, what's going on? And I had told him I had a lot of fragrances, gave him roughly the number. And he's like, wow. And then he told me the number of fragrances he had, which was more than double what I had as he did work at Macy's. Now, what was really cool is he had a little sample of this and he said, I want you to try this one. And he gave me the little vial and he said, do you mind spraying it right now? I want to see your reaction. And I said, no, that's fine. So I, I took the vial, sprayed my arm, waved it around like kind of like a monkey in the middle of the store and then brought it to my nose. And I instantly fell in love because there wasn't another fragrance in my collection that smelled like this one. Um, and I didn't buy it on the spot because again, to bite the bullet to buy this for me was kind of a tough one at first and then I kept smelling that sample until I ran out of the sample and then I had to go buy the sample buy the actual fragrance 
It was the holiday. It was around holidays, so Christmas time. The stores were open later, and and I felt like I just had to go get this because nobody else carried it except for Macy's at the time. Everyone else was out of stock, <coughs> if they even carried it. Excuse me. So I went back and I bought the fragrance, and honestly, I was so happy that I did. I wore it a lot, and I mean, this was probably my signature scent. Every other day, every couple days. Following Wanted by Night, the next fragrance I really wanted to add to my collection was one that was getting a lot of hype in the fragrance community, whether it was on Facebook, YouTube, or different areas like that. And ultimately, Jeremy Fragrance, Ashton Kirkland, Dallas, and a bunch of other reviewers had said that this fragrance right here was one that you kind of had to have. It was just a, you know, it was nothing like revolutionary, but it was something that was just top of its game, and, and especially for what it's used for. And that's none other than Proud Alone. I don't see this ever being out of my collection. I hope that went into focus. Go up one more time. Uh, I don't see me ever pulling this one out of my collection. I personally love this fragrance. I like to wear it a lot to work. I like to wear it a lot out and about. If I just want to grab a, a dumb root fragrance, I always have a 20 or 30 milliliter of this with me at all times. Uh, just in case that's the fragrance I want to wear that day. Um, I just truly really think it's... It's a great fragrance. It's very easy, very mass appealing. One of my top three complimented fragrances ever. And I wear a lot of fragrances, but I'll tell you right now, uh, that does coincide with how much I wear this because I do wear it a lot, but I get a ton of compliments on it. People don't always realize that you do commonly get more compliments on the fragrance that you wear more often. I know it's shocking, but that does make just perfect sense. Uh, so again, the next one on that list is Prada Loam. To pull the trigger on this was a big bullet to bite. And I was super glad that I did. First fragrance that I, I purchased as a niche fragrance, knowing it was niche. Um, I subscribed to Scentbird for a short period of time. Canceled that pretty quick after subscribing to it, realizing the pricing and such. And um, ultimately, I ordered this guy right here. Amlage Fate Man. Now, this is the only fragrance I ever was able to purchase from Notino before they stopped making it so people couldn't purchase from there anymore in the United States. Be cool if they go back on again. Um, I think I got this at a really good deal back then. I'm not exactly sure what the prices were, uh, what the price was, but the bottle was awesome. The cap was awesome. Everything about it was just really beautiful, really heavy, really nice. If you've ever put this to your nose, it is a very eccentric smell. Um, some people might not like it. Um, I personally think it's great especially for really cold weather. But other than that, you definitely don't want to wear this when it's hot out or in a lot of heat or a really tight closed area. It's it's pretty potent. Um, but again, that's the first fragrance I bought that was a niche fragrance that I knew was niche. When I bought Green Irish Tweed, I didn't know what it was. Saw some really good reviews. Uh, decided to bite the bullet on that one with the pricing. And when I got to my nose, I was just in love. Never once until I started watching all the YouTube channels and um, being part of these uh, Facebook groups, did I realize that Cody, uh, Aspen by Cody, David off Cool Water, and Green Irish Tweed were all somewhat similar? And I, I just, the fact that I love all three of those makes very good sense to why I love all three of those because they are similar. Um, it's kind of like a uh, cheeseburger from, you know, the chain store, cheeseburger from a nice restaurant, or a nice filet. That's the level that those three different fragrances are to each other. And ultimately, to me, they're just awesome. They'll be in my collection for a long time. Hopefully you enjoyed going through my fragrance journey with me because I know I really enjoyed having you here with me to do it. If you could do me a huge favor though, down below in the comments, list your fragrance journey. Let me know the first fragrance you started with and how you uh, you evolved over the years and over time. And or if you are on the same fragrance now that you started with, let me know that too. Any comments down below would be awesome. Like this video, make sure to click that subscribe button as well. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you want to give me some recommendations for some future content, that'd be amazing as well. I really do appreciate you coming by. And please remember, if you're making the world a better place just one spray at a time, then to me, you're just making sense. Until next time.